All right, so in this next module, we're gonna be talking about being interviewed by the media. And I have with me today, I'm gonna to have a, a conversation with three of my former students. They've all done some really interesting research that's been picked up in the general media. So they've all had the experience of having to be interviewed both on the radio and for print media. And they're gonna tell you a little bit about their experience and give you some tips because if you do end up getting published eventually, which a lot of you will, especially if you're published in a high profile journal, you will likely be contacted at some point in your career by somebody from the media who wants to do an interview. So you have to be a little bit prepared. So I have with me today three of my former students. Uh, I'll just give them a brief introduction. So this is Dr. Kit Delgado. He's an instructor of emergency medicine at Stanford University. I have Dr. Crystal Smith Spangler, who's an instructor of medicine at Stanford University, and Iran Ben David, Dr. Iran Ben David, assistant professor of medicine at Stanford University. I'm just going to briefly tell you a little bit about their uh, each of their individual research and their experience with the media. They'll be telling you more about it as we go along. So uh, Kit actually uh, had a paper in the Annals of Emergency Medicine in 2010 that was about the use of preventative services, people re receiving preventative care in the emergency room. That got a lot of media attention. He was did a number of radio interviews, including on health radio. And actually just last week in 2012 had a paper in the Journal of Hospital Medicine about patients being transferred from the emergency room to the ICU. He was interviewed uh, by one of the Stanford News Services for that, so he's had some very recent experience with interviewing. Uh, Dr. Crystal Spangler smith had a paper in Annals of Internal Medicine in 2010 on sodium reduction strategies that was covered by a number of media outlets, and recently had a 2012 paper uh, in the Annals of Internal Medicine that was on organic food, and that's a topic of, a hot topic of interest, and was covered by uh, quite a few media outlets. She was interviewed on NPR. It's been talked about in the New York Times, the LA Times, ABC News. So that got some wide media coverage and she'll, she'll tell you a little bit about that. And then uh, Dr. Aaron Ben David, he had a, a paper actually uh, in 2010 on antiretroviral therapy in Africa that got quite a bit of media coverage and, that, and also very recently in 2012 had a paper in the Journal of the American Medical Association which is about uh, U.S. AIDS relief to Africa and how what the impact that's had. And so that was covered uh, in a number of media outlets, NPR, was mentioned in the LA Times, the Washington Post, and so he's also done a number of interviews uh, very recently. So I'm gonna start just uh, to give you guys an, a sense of how does the media even find out about your work? So my first question for the panel is just how did you know, if you know, how did, how did the media outlet that you were interviewed by, or the number of them, how did they learn about your work? So uh, I'll let anybody jump in who wants to, to take that question. Well, the um, Stanford Press Office um, writes a press release, and I think for most publications, if you are, would like them to do a press release, um, they can, they work with you, and so they were, were helpful in crafting a press release. And I believe um, for um, some of the major journals, they they also have press releases as well. Right. Iran, did, was, did JAMA issue a press release on yours? Yeah, so so JAMA issued a press release. Uh, in addition, we have by now established a relationship with the press office. It's always good to have this personal relationship yeah. with the press office. Uh, and, uh, and whenever um, an article will be coming out, um, you can let them uh, know ahead of time and they will uh, issue a Stanford press release. There's often, uh, too, especially in the, in the uh, more high profile journals, they, they have their own press office and they will issue their right. own press release. It's, it's often nice to have, to have a relationship with the press office at your institution because they will usually allow you to take a look at the press release and kind of help craft the message, which you don't get, as we'll talk about later, with uh, an independent media outlet. Good. Um, so a uh, very important question, uh, what did you do to prepare for your interview? <laughs> Once you knew that you were gonna be interviewed, uh, what, what were the steps you took to get ready? So I met with uh, Teal Pennebacher, who um, was our media relations person in our research center, and she pretended to be uh, the interviewer in the, on the radio station, and that was extremely helpful in terms of coming up with my sound bites uh, that I wanted to get across on, on the radio. Um, and then the second thing I did was right before the interview, I made a one-page document with bullet points that I wanted to get across on what are the take-home messages, what we did, and then some additional details in case they asked about those. Good. Yeah, for a radio interview, you really need to be prepared because you're doing it, was it live? And, or at least uh, it was going to be whatever you said is <laughs> yeah, immediately. Yeah, it was live. So. Yeah, okay, so you really have to be prepared. Yeah, I did something similar. I met with the, my senior author and together we 
uh, as well as with the press office, um, developed our kind of key bullet points that we wanted to convey um, succinctly. And I thought it was really useful to have, just like he had a one-page document written out word for word, um, just a couple sentences so that um, cause it, you really want yourself you to be quoted correctly. Yeah. And I know I sometimes will, in this conversation, stop or not have a complete sense, but you want your senses to be complete and well thought out. And so I thought it was very useful to have a one page um, I mean, document and then you know, some bullets that they ask to remind you if there's anything else that you wanted to add. Good. Right, there, there are many things that are worth thinking about ahead of time. Uh, the, the kind of media outlet, whether it's radio or television or, or uh, just in the, in the, um, in the press, in the printed press, um, it, it, it can, uh, the, the implications can be very different. So, you know, I've had one radio interview with um, almost like a, a morning talk show kind of host, yeah. uh, almost <laughs> like I'm in the morning, but for uh, uh, serious. And, uh, and ahead of time, I was, uh, you know, the, our, our press uh, office uh, representative did some background check on the person that told me that, you know, he's probably going to ask a few questions that are a little bit off the, mm -hmm. uh, little bit off the mark. And so uh, for those kinds of uh, interviews in particular, it's very important to have, again, your, sort of your, your speaking points. And you can always bring the, the questions back to, uh, to the speaking point. So having, being prepared is going to be very important. Um, sometimes you can ask for the questions ahead of time uh, and know, uh, <coughs> and know what, uh, yeah. what uh, people are going to ask you and, and again, so having a, having a re prepared responses is, uh, is helpful. You can also ask what, um, if they have a particular angle that they're going to be covering, like what the angle of the article is, sometimes you can find out about that. Um, and it's also, as you mentioned, useful if you can, find a little bit about who you're going to be doing the interview with, so you can get an idea of perhaps what they might ask you about. So you just have to keep, keep in mind that, you know, you know your topic more than anyone else, so you will know the answer. It's just a question of making sure you can convey it um, in a very articulate way. Did, did you two practice at all with a, sort of do a mock interview with anyone as well? Uh, yeah, so so uh, I've done mock interviews and um, I actually had someone film me because one of one of my interviews mm. was, a, was a video, video interview. Yeah. Um, so uh, body posture and body position uh, makes a difference. And the other thing I would say is again, it's, it's uh, the, the relationship with the pre local press office is important because they will sometimes screen uh, the people who want to uh, come and, okay. uh, and interview <coughs> you, um, and, and you know, you can then have at least uh, someone, uh, someone who sort of will will think through you whether that's an interview that's worth doing okay. or not worth. Doing. So there may be sometimes where you might want to turn down an interview, uh, possibly. <coughs> Especially, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you know for a very highly publicized uh, right. article, it, it can be yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Crystal's was covered quite extensively, so yeah. you may have had to turn some interviews down just for time. And Yeah, so yeah. Um, once it became clear that there was a lot of interest, Stanford, the press office, um, handled all the requests and helped triage which ones I should prioritize. That's great, right, good, good. So there was a lot of research and, and preparation, and it sounds like that went into all of these, which is good for the students to be aware of. Um, the next question is, what was the most surprising thing about the experience, perhaps for your first experience being interviewed, were there things you weren't expecting that came out of that, either good or bad? I think, I think what you don't realize is that it's really over very quickly. Uh, you know, a three to four minute interview, the interviewer is gonna be talking at least two minutes of the time setting up the question. So you really only have about uh, a minute or two to get across your main points which really boils down to about one or two take home messages and maybe one, one or a couple sentences about what you actually did uh, for your study. So I think that just goes back to um, really honing down your message into that one bullet point um, and, uh, and before you know it, the interview's over. Yeah, I would agree that you have to be very succinct or at least um, think about what the amount of time you're gonna have, especially for TV. You have um, almost no time given to you to express your um, thoughts. It's very, very limited. Right, and and, and now to uh, also, it's a very um, yeah. it, 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 it it's not a very impromptu experience. Um, so it's yeah. it, it's very uh, it, by and large your message is uh, is prepared ahead of time and. Uh, interviewers sometimes they all they want to hear is is that message in a in a sound bite 
Um, and so it's uh, it's not an opportunity for you to, you know, explore and discuss. It, it's a very right. uh, succinct kind of experience. Yeah, I think that's probably surprising to a lot of students because they a lot of times they try to present these types of interviews as if they're spontaneous and conversational, but in fact, there's a lot that goes in, into them ahead of time. So. I would say the other thing I, I didn't expect is um, on the, the morning talk radio show, I was on to ask me to really speculate on my findings and the implications for healthcare reform. And, uh, you know, that, that was a curveball question to me, but um, I think it's, it's important not to um, speculate too much and kind of bring it back to the message. So kind of thinking ahead of time, if you, if you get a curveball question, kind of figuring out how are you going to get it back to your message not really go beyond the conclusions of your paper uh, and, and speculating too much about what it, what the overall and the big picture implications are. I think that's important. So, um, so the next question is, what would you do differently to prepare for your next interview? So you've all done a number of interviews. Uh, now, you, at some point, did you go back and sort of revise your process a little bit based on your early experiences? And I think, you know, um, get a slightly better at, uh, at handling some of the questions. And, and sometimes one of the things I, I plan for now um, is to actually create that bridge. When people ask you the question that's not, uh, that you don't want to answer, uh, you figure out how to bridge it back to the question you uh, <laughs> hoped you were asked um, and the question you do want to answer. And, uh, and so, you know, having that bridge is, uh, is useful. Um, and then, um, um, the other thing is, you know, early on I had a script that was written, and, and it, it's useful to have a script that's written. Um, I try to not have it be scripted now, mm -hmm. uh, but practice uh, practice the things I want to say ahead of yeah. time. I, I think one thing that's hard to do is uh, you have your bullet points. It's very easy to say your bullet point and keep going because there's a pause and before the interviewer asks the next question, and I think if I were to you know, keep doing this, is to just say your bullet point, get the interviewer to ask the next question, because then you can start rambling for a long period of time, and that does sound a little bit awkward on the on the radio. And as a, sometimes someone who does interviews uh, a lot, I actually like sometimes when the, I will pause, because I do like it when the scientist rambles on a little, you sometimes get some interesting material, so that is a strategy that you know a journalist will use to try to get something more organic from you. <laughs> I think also with talking with the print media, you have to keep in mind that they're writing or typing really fast, and it helps if you pause and mm -hmm. um, talk really slowly. And um, some of them taped the interview, which I thought was really useful because for their own purposes so they could get the quotes right. But particularly if they're not taping, you just need to be very cognizant of the fact that they, if you want them to get your quote right, you really have to talk slowly and have, take lots of breaks and kind of say a sentence and wait a second. And then they'll write down the next sentence. That's a good point, yeah. yeah. Some of them are doing think, it on the fly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, one more tip that I think is yeah. going to be helpful for me in the, in the future, and I haven't done it yet, but my plan, <laughs> is, is that a lot of times the, the, what people take away from your uh, interview and from the, is the, the, the journalists as well as the people who are uh, the audience is the very last point that you're making. Mm -hmm. So to prepare a, a real sort of takeaway that you want to you wanna end on that note and, and have that be the main point mm -hmm. um, so that it's not, uh, it's not a qualification or a limitation, but really the, the, the main point that you want to have uh, people remember. Good. Making sure you get across that take home message and knowing what exactly your take home message is ahead of time. And our, you know, you've all given a number of uh, tips already, uh, but if you had to give tips to sort of young scientists who uh, might uh, be embarking soon on their first interview, uh, you've already hit upon some of those, but is there additional advice or tips that you'd give them? So one thing is, um, as a scientist or a researcher, you're, um, you know your study intricately and all the fine details, and if you're explaining your study to the, the general media, I think it's, one thing, one trick you can do is imagine like you're having a conversation with your Uncle Bob, you know, <laughs> who's, uh, you're trying to tell your Uncle Bob, this is what I did, you know, with my time over the last six months, this is what we found. And if you envision that person, then you start dropping a lot of the scientific lingo and really cut down to the main message that uh, the lay person can understand. Right, keeping in mind your audience is maybe a very general is a good idea, yeah. 
and in fact, uh, you know, both of them mentioned doing mock interviews. I think these have been uh, useful and helpful. And so, uh, yeah. you, you know, especially uh, early on, it's uh, it's a very useful thing to do, and especially with someone who is perhaps not a a, a fellow scientist, but uh, yeah, someone who's a little bit more lay. Uh, and were you happy with the final outcome? Maybe with uh, maybe there were good experiences and bad experiences. Can you talk either about a good experience or a bad experience where you, the final article or the radio show came out as you'd hoped, or maybe it didn't quite come out as you'd hoped? And, and what were the the, the issues? <laughs> Crystal, you want to jump in? <laughs> um, I know you've had well, mixed experience recently. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, um, I did an NPR um, uh, radio talk. Show. Oh, I did an NPR radio talk show, and um, I, 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 there were two other um, um, discussants on the, um, the the radio show, and so I presented my my findings, made a couple um, points, and then I was actually very happy that the that you know they were kind of debating things that were peripherally related to my study, but not exactly what my study was about. In fact, my study could not answer that question. So I was very happy that there were people who wanted to debate it because that really wasn't something that I was going to debate because that's not what my study was about. So I was happy that, so I had asked the um, the NPR interview what we were going to talk about and who the others discussants and let him know that, you know, I'm going to talk about my study but not about kind of issues related to, but but not about my study. So that was a good experience. Yeah, yeah good. Any other good or, or bad experiences? Um, I, you know, I've had, I've had, uh, so I've had uh, a, a, at least one interview where uh, the, the um, printed piece that came uh, subsequently to that, um, you know, grossly misrepresented mm -hmm. um, the article. And, um, you know, I don't know if there was partly lack of clarity on my part, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, certainly felt like there's something there that you, you, there are lots of pieces like that that you don't necessarily want to have out there. Uh, um, Sort of covering your article. Did, uh, did you think of it? Anything you could have done differently after that one that could have changed that experience, or, or not so much? Yeah, no. I mean, I think uh, uh, you know. So p part of the reason um, was that the, the uh, reporter really wanted to have to know very detailed uh, issues about uh, about the methods and okay. how uh, how the numbers were derived, and and um, and you know, and I think. That, there's so there's a difficulty in communicating that both because right. uh, you know I, I wasn't prepared and also because uh, it, I think it was very difficult sometimes to convey a lot of these uh, uh, sort of concepts in a very uh, sort of easy way. Um, so you know I don't know exactly what I could have uh, done, but you know perhaps ask her to review the article uh, ahead of time. Right. Um, uh, you know, to make sure that these are, uh, these are accurate. That's a good point you bring up because a, a lot of times you don't have an opportunity to review. Does, does anyone want to comment on, the, on, have you ever had an opportunity to review or most of them have not, you've not had an opportunity? Yeah, um, most, I always offered, and they like, if you want to send me bits of it to check or do some fact checking, I'm happy to help, but rarely did they take me up on it. Occasionally someone would um, send me a clarification, like, did I get this correct? And so I really appreciated that. I think it brings up a point is you can't, you can do your best, you know, you know, I had the same one page talking point with every person I talked to and the ar articles had various different mm -hmm. takes on it. So, you know, you um, do your best to do it, but you don't know you don't have control. If someone, you know, this is, they're writing about what you did, you're not writing about it. Right, good. Yeah, and I think, I think if you do have the opportunity to review it, you should ask for it and, um, and then also uh, with with developing the press release uh, that goes in, and what yeah. what um, the uh, journalists use a lot of times to get quotes for for their article, uh, just making sure that you're very comfortable with every word of the press release and, and the revision process uh, before the interviews even begin is very helpful. Yeah, the press release really does control a lot of the media message. So if you have an opportunity to do a press release, that can help to sort of shape the message that the media picks up. And uh, do you think it, this is sort of a related question? But do you think that there's uh, that that the media outlet that you interviewed with accurately captured the take-home messages? Uh, I, obviously, there were instances when you did not think that. Um, in general, does, does the media do a good job, or, or have you had more good experiences than bad experiences? Mixed, <laughs> mixed bag. <laughs> it's hard to make generalizations. Yeah, yeah, it varies. 
Yeah. yeah. So the, you know, with with uh, with Jamma, they actually um, hired a sort of a freelance uh, video company to come okay, and, and do the interview. And so when when it's motivated by the journal, by and large, they'll do a, they'll do a very thorough job mm -hmm. in, in understanding the article ahead of time, asking questions that highlight aspects of the research. Um, and so you know, the final product of that uh, w was you know very well captured. Um, and if I could just get a, a quick closing point from each of you, because we're running out of time here. So uh, I'll let whoever wants to take it first with one kind of parting message for, again, young scientists who might be getting published soon and, and getting some requests for interviews. I think one is, is getting to meet your um, press officer or whoever's going to write your um, your press release at, at the moment that uh, you know your your paper is accepted to the journal and giving them some advance time uh, and notice, and then that way they get in touch with the journal and find out when the paper is going to come out instead of having a rough you know a rush job uh, right at the end. You know when your proof gets accepted, uh, I think is key. And I think the second thing is is really just having uh, all the things we've talked about with um, preparation with a mock interview having uh, bullet points, and then really tailoring your message to uh, a smart individual who's a non-expert, uh, maybe at the level of a family member, and as if you're communicating with them, I think is helpful. Great, that's great. Yeah, I think we've brought up a lot of good um, suggestions here, and it's a you know, good opportunity to explain your research, and so if you're getting about to get published, congratulations, and use that opportunity to um, be able to explain your work. Yeah, the, the being interviewed by the media is a, is a good thing in the end. Yeah, yeah, good. I know. Right. So yes, no. It's uh, you know, it's it's really it's your opportunity to speak with the world and explain your work to the world, and uh, you know, it's it's both challenging and at the same time rewarding. And um, you know, the media sometimes has a life of its own, and <laughs> and so what uh, the final product of of, uh, of your work, um, you know, it's partly in your control, and you want to make sure that uh, you come across your message comes across as accurately as possible. Uh, but some of it is just about um, you know, our, our our world within in a free press free yeah. press kind of uh, society. Great. So I just want to thank my panel, Dr. Delgado, Dr. Smith Spangler, and Dr. Ben David for being here today. You provided some wonderful information for our audience, and um, thanks everyone for for watching. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University please visit us at med.stanford.edu.